Guys, we're here. Another Dark Souls 3 achievement guide for it. We are going for the Death Incarnate achievement, which is beating the game on apocalyptic difficulty. So I'm gonna be walking you through each boss fight on apocalyptic, and showing you some strategies and some tips on how to beat most of these bosses. Not all of them am I going to be going through. I'm gonna be skipping Lord of the Hollows and Abraxas, for they are not needed to beat the game. But I'll be going through every little boss and sub boss required to beat the game. Now. Obviously, Envy is the easiest, so we're going to be going through this fight. Not much really to here. I've already done a video before on most of these bosses as it is. Same patterns basically apply with a little bit more damage inflicted upon you. So basically, you're going to be down to that bar you see there, and you're going to have a little cutscene where you're going to go through the floor. You're going to be swinging up through these little swing areas on these platforms. And you're going to basically lock onto her mid-air and just hit the combination of X many times as you can before it knocks her down in the air. Now I recommend you get as many swings on her as you can before she disappears and she'll use a teleport and do a slam. So be prepared for that to jump and dodge that. And she'll do that two times at this first part. Other than that, she'll do this little jab poke with this little lightning strike above you. So try to just dodge every time you see her make a little jab at you. Just dodge. She'll do these swings. Every so often she'll mix these up. And she'll slam down on the ground again, which is the most obvious one. She'll be in the air, so it's pretty obvious to know that she's going to be slamming the ground. And when you get that second slam, I would approach her as fast as you can. Try to be near her with the shockwave and jump towards her. That way you'll be closest to her when you have a bunch of free hits on her, because she will be vulnerable for a little bit of time. So I would go to town on her as much as you can before she does the next move. Go ahead and use your Nephilim or Spites. No big deal here. If you do end up dying, you will get them back. So it's not like it's a total loss. Try to save them for when your health is pretty low when you think you're about a hit or two away from death. Pop one of those if you get the chance. Same thing applies here. You're going to be following the path above, swing across, knock her down in the air, and you'll go to town for a few times. Now she's going to do the ground slam three times, so be prepared for it to do it three times. And like the last pattern before, make sure in that last slam, if you can get as close as you can before she... You know, when the wave is still going, jump towards her and over it. That way you can be as close to her as you can when you get a couple hits on her before she does the next move. Not too bad here. She doesn't do a hell of a lot of damage to you, so just keep that in mind. Your best bit of attack for when she's vulnerable is the shock waves, because you get a bit of get a couple swings on her without her doing anything to you. Envy is obviously the easiest boss. Now we'll be moving on to Wrath. Wrath can be a bit of a pain in the ass, where he's got a few bit of patterns here that inflict a decent amount of damage. And right off the bat, once you have your distance, you'll do a charge, which is the easiest one to do. You do this charge swing, and you do another swing with one hand. His hardest move to dodge, I would say, is that downward overhead double swing strike, which does a lot of damage. You could try to keep your distance for the most fight and dodge that charge attack, for it's very, very easy. So you'll usually keep the same pattern. You'll do a charge, and you'll do one swing like that, and then you'll do a double handed swing overhead. Once in a while, he'll mix it up with the right hand swing single handedly. But like I said, your best chance of getting some free vulnerable hits on him is when he charges you with that little swing. It's pretty easy to dodge, so is the one right after that. But that one right there is the worst to dodge, and it does some serious damage to you. So keep that in mind. As you can see there, that's almost a one-hit kill. So I'll, I'd try to get my distance from him. Now his pattern will be the same until you get him a little bit less than halfway. So if you want, you can keep running away from him and can make him keep charging you for the most part because he'll keep doing these same patterns. Once you get less than halfway, he'll do the supercharged roundabout slam, which is pretty easy to dodge. You can see that coming. Once you back up from that, he'll throw his swords at you, do another little charge. Another easy attack to dodge. Make sure you do make maybe two or three hits, then run away because he will try to kick you in the face, which is also another pretty serious blow. So make sure you keep getting your distance from him. And you'll keep doing these charge attacks with these super swings. So make sure you go in there, get some swings on him, make sure you run away. Because then he'll repeat these same patterns of throwing his sword at you. Then he'll charge you and do that swing. Get a couple hits on him there and make sure you back away. I went a little crazy on that one. And again, a little crazy because I'm getting a little antsy to beat him. So if you want, save your wrath for this part. And your havoc. All that stuff to save it for the very, very end. I wouldn't try wasting this anytime before. He's at least about a quarter dead. It's a good momentum spot for you to build up some extra health and a free hit there of invulnerability so that way you can get some extra damage. But I would, like I said, I wouldn't use it unless he's about dead. Otherwise, you basically waste it for nothing. So he can be a bit of a bitch. So keep that in mind. It might take you a few tries to get this pattern down. 
up next we're gonna be showing you Avarice which in my opinion is one of the worst bosses he is a pain in the ass towards the end the beginning is kind of a flurry of random punch and swing so make sure you just kind of watch his recoil for that punch he can punch you from anywhere to it up like four or five times in consecutive order it's just a matter of all that's just random RNG so just keep that in mind just try to hit him a couple times and run away if you can eventually he'll jump on top and start throwing crap at you now your best spot for hitting him is when he jumps down try to time that jump just right and then get some spins on him from there what I basically did the entire fight wasn't trying to fight him toe to toe was I try to keep my distance from him for the most part and he'll just keep trying to jump on your head and if you can time those jumps when he tries to jump on you like that he will he will never touch you at all except for these punches here and there if you try to go too crazy he will start swinging at you but if you want you can just back away and he'll just keep trying to jump on your head or at the very least he'll jump on top of his little towers and start throwing crap at you again now as always save your Nephilim or Spites until you're about a one to two hits away from death as you will get them back if you die anyway it's not a big loss now he'll get, start to get bigger and bigger objects now this is when I for sure tend to stay away from him now he'll eventually have random RNG patterns he'll throw them at you or he'll try to get really close to you and spoon them at you so keep that in mind he's got various objects varying from a dresser to a tub to some big giant skull with horns on it so keep that in mind these aren't the worst the worst is to get to come at the very very end which he will just constantly be coming at you with it so these aren't too bad if you keep backing away from him he'll eventually try to jump on you and you get some free swings on him there and then just back away and he'll eventually just chuck it at you basically the same pattern rinse and repeat he'll just go on top he just kept throwing crap at you pretty easy to dodge and like I said he'll eventually just randomly throw crap at you like that and then you'll pick another one up and come at you with it not much to do here but just to wait until he gets down to the last bit of his health before he gets really really bad in my opinion so every time he jumps down I go to town for at least three to four swings try to run away as fast as you can get some distance so you know he's gonna jump prepare for it get some more swings back away again if you get the swinging timing done with the jumps he's got here, you better get like four swings, and at that last swing, you'll about have the timing down to where you'll basically be jumping back when he's having it that swing with that, with that item. Yeah. Now, a little less than half, this is where it gets bad. You'll know it's bad when he comes at you with the refrigerator because he will be relentless. He has this overhead super slam. It's pretty slow to build up, so it's pretty easy to dodge. Now, if that one takes some timing to get down. That one's just bad. That sudden, quick, just little thrust is a pain in the ass to dodge. That one especially is a pain in the ass. I try to get some swings and run away because he is relentless with this thing. That thing does some serious damage. So I would suggest you just get out of the way as fast as you can. Try to time them if you can. They are a pain in the ass. The overhead slam is by far the easiest because it's slow build up. I'm going to try to go time as fast as I can because the longer you drag this little segment out, the worse it's going to be. If you can get that swing dodge down when he swings it with you, that'd be great because you can get some swings on him right there. Otherwise, he'll just come at you and just ram it through everything, through the towers, everything, then switch you again. Just keep that in mind. Like I said, save all your good abilities for the last bit where you can get some invulnerability time on him. And he can be a bitch, so good luck with him, guys. Alright, we're going to be moving on to the Angelic Champion. I skip Sloth for later on, make it easier. Now this, in my opinion, is also one of the worst boss fights in the game. For there he is just sporadic and constantly swinging at you. Hard to time his dodges, and obviously you got to fight four angels at the beginning. All RNG, and depending upon how lucky you can get, sometimes I killed all four of them without taking a single blow. Sometimes I ended up having to waste two of my healing items because the game is a pain in the ass so just take them out as quickly as you can not much real skill or strategy there just get kind of lucky with them try to single them out if you can and go out one at a time once he comes out he's gonna have a flurry of dodges swings with his shield stab motions and a couple of double strikes he'll have this charge attack which is one of the easy ones to dodge his double swing there is one of the hardest and that shield dodge shield swing excuse me is pretty hard to dodge in time as well it's all pretty random and he is pretty relentless as you can see he is just going to town on me and is not stopping like I said I think he's one of the worst I 
personally, I think he is the worst for me, in, the, in my opinion. I don't like fighting him at all. He's just a pain in the ass. I kind of use my Havoc a little bit early to gain a little bit of health back, to run away. Now, I recommend if I was you, use some Fortification Shards, use some Strength Shards if you have to. Do whatever it takes to beat this guy. Use a couple of each if you have to. I wouldn't use more than three. By that time, if you end up dying, just quit the game out and restart. You'll have your items back with you as it is. So, I would just use a couple of these each. Because, like I said, this guy, like you can just see, he's just relentless jabbing at me. And there's no room to dodge this. So, once you get him halfway down, you'll have an easy attack to dodge. You'll have this super overhead slam, this beam come out and go across the whole map. Pretty obvious to notice when he does it. So be prepared for that and get out the way. Try to get close to him at the same time. Get some cheap shots on him. For there, he's vulnerable for a couple seconds. Like I said, I'm just going to keep popping healing items and fortification shards because I hate this fight. Pain in the ass with this charge attack. Get you like halfway across the map for a quarter of your life. Just be prepared for that. It's a real pain in the ass. It's kind of sporadic and it's pretty random. So just keep on him. Make sure you pay attention to those charge attacks. The shield swing is kind of obvious. So kind of rear up a little bit and prepare for it and hopefully get him dead guys that guy is a pain in the ass good luck to you on that one you already have lust also not a pain in the ass but if you got um beat before you kind of figure out this pattern for lust it isn't too bad one of my personal favorite methods to beating her is going ahead with the flame hollow and using nunchucks on her basically if you can use those you can get some serious damage on her from behind if you can get her on her fast enough also, now you have your Salvation, which is a useful tool, and I recommend you guys upgrade this right away, as fast as you can. I upgraded only my Whip and my Salvation, and my Stasis out at the end of the game. That is all I upgraded. I saved most of my upgrades for my uh, Salvation, because this thing is a useful tool. You can get some couple cheap shots on her when she's charging you. Make sure you keep ahead of her if you can. She's pretty quick and fast. I tried using the... Uh, Fire Hollow to get behind her and use my dump checks, but it doesn't always work. I try to get some burning damage on her. She has this overhead jump swing, which can be kind of a bitch to dodge because it's a random way to hit you sometimes. I try the same method like on her. I use it for Avarice. Just keep my distance on her, and she'll do this charge attack on you, which is your best moment to dodge her. And she'll also do that jump overhead attack, which is also a pretty easy attack to dodge. So once she dodges those out of the way, go in for a couple swings, and then back out and rinse and repeat. Once you see her rear up for a charge attack, if you got the distance, I would throw the salvation. But if she's coming at you, I would wait. Otherwise, she's going to get a free hit on you. So she's pretty uh, sporadic and crazy because she has all kinds of multiple swing attacks, combinations. Just be prepared for her to move and dodge those attacks. They are pretty random at most and sporadic. She'll have double swings, the jumping, and all this crazy crap. And to make things worse, she convinces you seal to try to beat you down halfway through her fight. So, you won't be able to attack her. You won't be able to get through her blocking de attack. Because <laughs> she's blocking defense, I mean. So she will constantly block everything you have. I kind of pop my Storm Hollow. Havoc, bullshit, not Havoc. My uh, Wrath Bar. Excuse me, my Wrath Bar on her. Kind of distract you seal and get some extra damage on her. I'm using my Havoc Bar here to get some extra health back. Try to get some damage on her. It ain't a whole lot. I never upgraded it once the entire game. I don't find that extremely useful. So I just use it a little bit to kind of chip away just a bit here. Now I'm going to pop an Undying Shard just in case. Because this fight, and I would say Gluttony, if you have Undying Shards, you might even want to use one on the Champion for the Angelic Champion too. Because these are some of the worst fights in the game. If you have them, don't be afraid to use them. And if you do end up dying, just quit the game, reload it, you'll have your items back. So I popped an Undying Shard. Later on I will use a Strength Shard again to beat her because yeah, I hate this boss fight. So the only way you're going to get through her is to constant dodge you seal attack. They kind of alternate back and forth. Once he comes at you and you dodge attack, she'll come at you. If you dodge her attack, try to get the perfect dodge on her attack at least. That way you will have the vulnerability to hit her. For the most part, if you don't get the perfect dodge, you can't really hit her. You might get a couple shots in at the very most, but she'll end up going back to blocking right away. So keep that in mind. As soon as he attacks, try to lure her out. Go up to her, make her swing at you, try to dodge those attacks. Try for that perfect dodge. If you get that perfect dodge, you will definitely get a couple hits on it for more. So just keep dodging around. Like I said, you'll be making, you'll be taking turns going back and forth between both of them. You'll know when you get a chance to attack her once he comes at you. <coughs> Excuse me. Just try your best to dodge him. He'll do some serious damage to you if you don't. Once he goes, she'll go. 
and vice versa. <coughs> Excuse me, um, sorry. I can't help it. I got a huge tickle in my throat now, and I'm constantly uh, coughing, trying to cough. It's hurting. Anyway, back to this. I'm just gonna keep going back and forth. <coughs> Try my best to dodge them both. Use the fortification shard if you have to. So I definitely popped the fortification shard. Didn't think I was even gonna use the undying shard as I was doing decently here, dodging them both. I got a little balls here towards the end because she's almost dead, and this is what happens. <coughs> I get smoked by that bell. Serious damage right here. Now that my fortification shards worn off, I'm gonna pop a strength shard just to make sure that I'm gonna get her dead. So once he attacks, I dodge it, I pop the shard. That would be your best moment to pop a shard after he attacks. Kind of keep your distance from her. You don't have time to pop one then. Otherwise, you might have time to pop one. Let's <coughs> keep that in mind. <coughs> keep on her and you should have her dead. I'm moving on to Gluttony. Now, he can be real pain in the ass if you don't know what you're doing. I recommend staying in this corner for the first bit of the fight. Throw your salvation in for several turns. You might do three or four slams. Keep that in mind. It's the last one. You'll sit there for a moment so you can go to town on him. After that, I would suggest coming after him and getting some swings on him. You might do a one arm punch, swing at you, combination with the one punch, one arm, and the other punch, other arm, and then the double punch. After that, he'll do some spin moves. So breeze a dodge. After that, I would recommend getting up close to him again, getting some tacks on him. And he'll just kind of dodge around here and do these tacks, these little swings and swings, and double arm punches. Breeze it pretty easy to dodge. If you get too far away from him, he'll start doing the spinning ass at you. Then after that, he'll do some more combinations of spinning up in the air. It's kind of random how many times he'll do it. After that, he'll either uh, do his um, tentacle slam, so you'll kind of notice he'll kind of pause for a moment and rear up. You'll know he's going to be doing that again. The whole time, I recommend throwing your salvation and get some extra damage on him. I'll uh, go towards him and do some more damage on him. Now, he might be randomly doing some punches with a combination of this suck ability. Now, if you put your force hollow on, he will not be able to budge you at all. So, you just stand there and just concentrate through your salvation and get some extra damage on him. And then you go back to doing his punches again. Then you'll follow it up again with more acid. So, if you ever get a chance, if you think you've got some time, go ahead and throw your salvation in for extra damage. Other than that, just keep chipping away at him. And you'll be halfway dead before you know it. Because once in a while, he'll go back to doing this combination of the swinging and more of that sucking abilities. Whenever you get these chances and he does these, it's back away in the corner when he slams to the ground. Throw your salvation at him. Just go a ton on him when he's vulnerable for a moment there. Go up to him again, get some more hits on him, and then he should do the sucking ability again one more time. And then just follow up some more salvation throws. Before you know it, you should be about halfway dead. And the next half of his fight is actually pretty easy. Keep this in mind, right after this little bit of cutscene, I would dash back as fast as you can. As you can see there, I almost died. I did not quite get back far enough. So I would just dash back as far as you can, as fast as you can, otherwise he will hit you. So all you gotta do is go up to these mines, get up to his face, I mean really, really, really close, and you'll start doing that sucking ability again. And then kind of go back to whichever side you started to the mine. Go back to the mine a little bit to kind of have him lure the mine in. He'll suck it in and he'll blow it up. All you gotta do is go up to a mine again. Don't get too close because it seems like on this difficulty they definitely explode a lot easier than they would on a different difficulty lore than this. So go up to the mine. Don't get too close to it. Just get real close to his face. Backtrack a little bit to the mine. Had a little bit of a pause segment here, sorry about that guys. Backtrack to the mine, and he is dead. Two mines, the mouth, and he's dead. Go up to him, press the B button, and that is that. Alright, moving on to Sloth. I went back to Sloth, making this fight a lot easier. So starting off, he'll start spitting ass at you, so I recommend running behind him as fast as you can. All you gotta do is kill a bunch of these crabs, and he'll eventually drop him onto the ground. So, if you get behind him, you'll... He won't be able to hit you as easily, but it's still possible to hit you with that cane swing. And it's pretty deadly, and it can be kind of a pain in the ass to dodge. Now, once you get most of these dead, he'll send more of his little minions at you. 
All you gotta do is keep just dodging around him and staying behind him as much as you can. Therefore, he won't be able to spring at you. But he can spit ass at you from behind, so keep that in mind as well. Dodge that if you see it coming at you. So, once you get this far, which is no damage to his life yet, but once you get this far, you eventually he'll be coming at you on the ground now. So I'd recommend taking out his little minions first once they get near you to get him out of the way because they can do some damage to you as well, and that's just a pain in the ass. So I waited at this point because he was doing some serious damage with that cane swing at me, almost killing me for one hit basically, and it's being a pain in the ass. So I waited to get my salvation chip him away to make it a little bit easier. Now it's up to you, you can fight him whenever you want, but therefore, since this is the only boss you can skip and come back to, I said, hell, why not? make it easier myself. So, he'll come at you with a flurry of attacks, swing attacks, and just he'll fly up in the air and smash the ground and do some acid area effect. Pretty easy to dodge. So I took out his minions. And I'm just gonna literally just sit here for the most part and constantly throw my salvation at him. Therefore, make it easier. Other than that, that's all I'm gonna be doing for this first part of the fight is constantly throw my salvation at him. To get him down to where he can finally change his pattern up and make it a little bit easier to attack him. So, at this point, getting close to him and he'll do these cane swings that are pretty deadly if you don't get the perfect dodge on that first swing. He'll have another swing at you, if not maybe three at the possible most. And at that time, you might just be dead with a hit or two of that. That's all it's going to take. And you'll be sitting there wondering what the fuck because this boss can be a bit cheap. So, why not play cheap with cheap? So that's why I weighed out my salvation to actually be able to do some serious damage to him and just to play a little bit of chicken run on him. So I'm just going to keep dodging around, throw my salvation at him. Now I keep this in mind through this video when I use my salvation. I basically only use my salvation at the base damage, therefore it does more damage. You could use the other abilities for specific parts which I'll be showing you when and where, but it's not really needed because it doesn't do as much damage as the base damage itself. So, this is what I was waiting for, is when he'll do these fly attacks, he'll flap in the air and slam at the ground. If you dodge that, you can get in there and get a couple swings on him to knock him down a little bit. So once he does that towards you, get in there and get a couple swings, use whatever ability you want. I kind of mixed it up with my Stasis Hollow Swords, because I got them upgraded a couple of times. As you can tell, it does some pretty good damage as well. Not as good as my whip, but still pretty good. You probably saw a little moments ago, he did get a shot on me with his cane. Now normally, if I was weaker than I was at a state before, it probably would end up killing me. As you saw, it did a pretty good chunk of damage as it was. And that was just the second swing. And that was still a pretty good chunk. Now normally that would have almost killed me. So I waited to upgrade myself, make this fight a little bit easier. Considering this is the one boss fight in the game that you can skip, I decided to say, hell, I'm just going to wait and make him a, a little bit easier. Make him basically a cinch. Now try not to get hit by that slam, because as you can see there, it does some pretty good damage. Overall, if you wait him out, one of the easier bosses in the game, you shouldn't use any uh, strength shards or any undying on, on shards or anything like that. I wouldn't waste them on him. So let's go a ton on him, and you can get some good shots on him there before he even gets a swing on you. And that swing after he sits there for a moment, it's a pretty good easy dodge. So dodge that, get some more swings on him, and run away. Alright, moving on to the Grok. Now, you thought that was a chicken shit run of me throwing my salvation at this guy. Now, this is what this entire fight consists of. Now, keep in mind that this is the last area in the game, Scar. And I went and fought him after Sloth, as you can tell. And I ain't kidding you when I say that a one-hit kill from this rock will kill you. And I am pretty beefed up. And I have most of my... You know, points into my strength and my health, and it's still a one hit kill. I mean, I cannot believe that this guy would do a one hit kill. I mean, even if you get close to him with his swing attacks, with his little axe, they can be easy to dodge, but they still are almost a one to two hit kill. Keeping in mind that I have my strength up to like 35 and my health up to like 20 something, and it's still pretty bad. So, if you want, you can wait out and play it safe and just sit here and throw your salvation at him until he dies because that is literally all he will do. If you keep your distance, he will just throw a rocket at you the entire time. 
and you'll just dodge it and just kind of throw this. I try to get little balls a couple times and go after him and watch him swing around and get some shots on him. It wasn't happening. I did a couple times. And I said I decided to play it safe and screw it. Therefore, this is why the main reason why this video is as long as it is, because you would just see me here dancing around for about like eight minutes, dodging his rocks. Pretty boring, I know, but this is the easiest way out there, I would say, to beat this guy. A little time consuming, but yet again, to play it safe rather than die a couple times in frustration, just come all the way back to this area. As we all know, backtracking in this game is a bit of a pain in the ass. And I know that I hate it myself. And I'm sure y'all hit too. From going way back to the last teleporting area you can spot at. And just to come through all the enemies all over again. And to get pissed off, you possibly fuck something up along the way and die. So, therefore, this is why I played it safe the entire fight. And it's pretty long, dried out, and boring, so just bear with me. You also, at least on a good note, if you haven't gotten an essence of a chosen, he'll also drop that for you. Now I recommend that you know, if you run into the game and you're trying to beat this on the hard difficulty pretty quickly, I wouldn't sidetrack too much or backtrack too much. I mean, unless you really want to try to really beat the character up even more, there isn't really. A whole lot I put into this run other than going through it and I used the Juggernaut as enhancement which is pretty good. Upgraded that one all the way. And I'm sorry I can't even remember the life stealing one, but the one that grants the life steal, I upgraded that one all the way as well. After I got this essence of a chosen. And I put that one in my whip because dealing damage to enemies and bosses and anything, you know, for that matter is a good chance to get some life back while you can save your Nephilim Respites. So that's a pretty good bet right there. I put the Juggernaut on my Salvation, therefore that's why I have extra damage on it. So it's a pretty good combination to put that on there. That way you can get the damage reduction reflection back at them. At the same time, you could also get a couple extra hits for throw. So like I said, I didn't really sidetrack too much for anything. I didn't backtrack for any humans. Or too much of the fragments or whatever I just found going through the game I just grabbed I didn't really do much on the side note for that in case if anyone was wondering what I all did for my character to be able to beat the game wasn't too crazy about anything I only upgraded my whip as far as I could I don't think not even upgrading it till I got that chunk of adamantine which was right before this area that was the only one I got in the entire game so I made it pretty Pretty fun the game without even bothering to upgrade up all the way, so I got it to the end before I upgraded all the way. I think I got my salvation like level eight or nine. Upgrade my taste salad to like level three at the most, and that was about all I upgraded. That and those two enhancements. That's all I really did. Nothing too crazy. I didn't buy any of my shards, none of my healing shards or any of my defense shards. I just found what I found in the game and went with that. So there's a little bit of story in case anyone's wondering about my items or what I did. That's that. Alright, I'm going to rejoin you up in the next fight here, so you can watch this through and through, and I'll catch you in the next one in a moment here.
Alright, moving on to Wrath, the second time you fight him, you'll be jumping down into the pit. He might just attack you right at the back, so be prepared to just dodge out the way. So basically, the rest of the game, I'm going to make use of my salvation, therefore why I upgraded it all the way, basically as much as I could. Constantly just throw at him, throw out the fight, as much as you can, whenever you get a chance. If he does a charge attack, you know, he's got his back towards you, it's a good time to actually go to town on him. Now what I did here at the beginning, after a couple more dodging around, I'll just try to pop a shard, a strength shard, or a frenzy shard. And if you can do that right off the bat, and you go to town on him, he'll then just try to attack his minions and get his health back. Therefore, he'll be trying to attack on them the entire time, and he will not be focused on you. So go ahead, pop a frenzy shard or a strength shard, whichever you want, you want to choose. It doesn't really matter. They're both pretty good for the attack, speed, and damage. So I'm just going to chip away just a little bit more before I do that. Through my salvation in him a couple times. Try to get a couple spins on him. He keeps getting these lucky hits on me. Like a lucky little bastard. So I'm going to kind of get him down just a little bit more. Kind of playing a little danger game here. My life being so low as it is. I'm going to pop him out here before I actually die. Now, this fight isn't too bad. Once you know what you're doing, you play the game once. It isn't too bad. I got some good methods here for you to show you in the second half of the fight. First half is pretty easy. You try to punch you and he'll summon his minions by doing that little punch wave thing. So once you see him rearing up for your punch, make sure you start preparing for a jump because you'll punch the ground. Keep some of a medium distance so you can get the timing right for the wave. And you want to dodge it a couple times. Probably three times. And then pop a shard and go and tout on him. Because like I said, he will not focus on you once he is this low in his life. You will sit there and constantly focus on getting his health back by attacking his own minions. So therefore, you should be able to get him down pretty easily. And you'll be on the second half of the fight. So once you get him down in the second half of the fight, he will have several different abilities. Some familiar from that first fight. His new one is he'll throw these blades at you and he'll spin around in a circle. Now, this is where one I told you about earlier, one of the good moments that you actually can use your actual salvation charge of a hollow. I would use the stasis hollow and throw it at him and it will stop those swords in place for a brief moment. That way he, when he gets near you, they will not damage you. But just keep your distance during this fight and wait for that same charge attack like the first fight you did for him at the beginning of the game. The same method this time, you have your salvation. So therefore just constantly throw your salvation whenever you get a chance and then he'll just constantly charge at you, just dodge out the way. I would get like three hits and probably back away. Four at the very, very most. If you're feeling balls enough to dodge that attack. And then you'll eventually just constantly, you just constantly back away from him. Throw your salvation at him. Do a throw at him for the slow, for the stasis hollow. He'll do some weird ass jump punching on you. Give you a brief moment for some free attacks on you. I mean, excuse me. Not much more to it than just constantly run away. Get a couple hits on him. Just run back, because by that time you run back, he'll probably swing at you and you'll probably dodge that. Just keep running. There is moments where he'll have been vulnerable to the salvation, it looks like, though. Just keep that in mind. If you don't see it doing damage, for some reason he's invulnerable to it. And for the most part, you'll run to repeat these same patterns. Whenever he does that spinning blade attack, just use your stasis hollow salvation throw on him. And when he jumps at you for like a jump punch, He'll just sit there for a moment so you get some free attacks on him. And then he'll eventually start charging at you again. Make sure you dodge that. Get like three hits on him, maybe four at the very, very most. Doesn't say you can get more than that. If you can get dodge that first swing, like in that first fight, just go ahead and get a couple more hits on him, hits on him and then run back. Eventually he'll start doing that throwing his switch bullshit. And do that same running charge at you punch crap. So just dodge that, get a couple more swings on him. And the rest of the fight should be about as predictable as the first part. <coughs> except, except this time, he'll just flame up a little bit. Let's so keep that in mind. Now, if you want, you can pop another strength shard on him here, like I did. I recommend if you have a lot of strength shards in the boss fights, go ahead and use your strength shards, your frenzy shards, or fortification shards, whatever you think you, you know feel comfortable with, if you think you can take damage or deal damage, I would recommend using maybe one of each if you have a decent amount. And feel free to buy them in the store too if you really want to, it's not like they're too expensive, I just wouldn't keep buying a bunch of them. Just use the ones you can find. Therefore, make your boss fights a lot easier.
Now, I would not recommend not ever using them because you're not going to ever use them for anything else but the boss fights. So, go ahead and I would recommend using them throughout the boss fights. Otherwise, you're going to have a lot of issues when you try to go with the boss fights, making these fights a lot longer. Therefore, making your dodging and all the stuff more drawn out and more susceptible to you being killed by some stupid crap. So, just keep that in mind. Shards are your friend on this difficulty if you haven't already been using them on any other lower difficulties as well. So, as you see here, I'm just going to keep the same thing. I'll keep that in mind as well if you want to try that. Sometimes it goes through him and hits that too. If you throw your swords at you, you can throw your salvation at him now. You have it, you can throw your salvation at it in midair and it will knock out of the air. And sometimes you'll get lucky enough where it'll go through the swords and hit him as well for damage. So, keep that in mind as another counter. Alright, moving on to Pride, which in my opinion is one of the easiest bosses in the game. Right off the bat, you can get a couple hits on her before she puts that shield up. And she'll do the charge attack that you swing, which is pretty easy to dodge, so dodge that. And she'll do another swing, kind of charge attack, not as strong. Now, your salvation will do damage to her shield, so keep that in mind. You can throw that at her for a couple, you know, pauses here and there if you want. So when that shield's down, just go down on her as much as you can. To do that constant charge swing attack, which is pretty easy to dodge for now. So you get a little bit more sporadic, but once you see her do that swinging around and aiming it towards the sword, towards the sky, she'll slam it down and put the shield back up. So get out of the way for that, because that shield power up thing will basically almost kill you in one hit. She'll also do these weird ass three balls launching at you, which is the easiest thing in the world to dodge. So you don't have to worry about that. You can just walk out of the way of that if you want. So I'd say it's about like. Depending upon where your strength's at, like 8 to 10 swings to knock your shield off, so keep that in mind. Hopefully you can get at least like a 4 to 5 hit combo on her. That way all you gotta do is get out another, go at her and get another full combo on her basically, and you'll knock your shield off. And she'll be vulnerable for a couple, to, you know, 6 swings. So once you get halfway through the boss fight, she'll do this stupid statue thing and have this beam across the room. Now your best bet to stay out of its way is to constantly follow it clockwise. If you stick with that pattern, it should never hit you as long as you keep, you know, trying to lure her away from it as you can. Because if you uh, try to jump across the beam either side, it will probably change directions and hit you. Therefore, that's why I just stuck with the same half of the room. Following the beam around the room, and hopefully that the thing didn't come up on me while I wasn't expecting it. So the same pattern here, I should do these weird charge attacks which are pretty easy to dodge. You can see her, you know, rear up for them. Just keep that in mind. Anytime she's across the room, just like constantly throw my salvation there the whole entire game since I got this thing. It's all I ever constantly do in between swings is to get the extra hit on it, people. Now, at this point, when she's like a little less than half, she'll do these flying up attacks that she didn't charge to you. It's pretty easy to dodge. Once she's at the wall, go ahead and attack her a couple times. She won't be very uh, apt to attack you back for a moment or two. And then she's constantly doing these charge swing attacks, which is pretty easy to dodge. And you'll just constantly go after her. Just constantly go after her, break that shield down, go after as much as you can. And make sure you keep an eye on that beam at all times. You don't want to lose track of where it's at or misjudge how far you are from it. Because that will be the end of the match if you do. Now, if you really want to, you can also use your force hollow to knock the thing back. Therefore, it doesn't knock it back very much, so it's not really worth me showing the video. You can knock her back with it too. Doesn't really do too much, that's why I didn't show that either. But, I'm just going to go ahead and just constantly go to town on her for you here. There isn't much more left of this video, because she's pretty easy. The stage salad doesn't really slow her down too much. I mean, I tried it a couple times when she's in the air charging at me to throw it at her. Didn't seem to do a whole lot. So, I'm just going to constantly just go to town on her here, and hopefully, I can kill her fast enough to where that beam doesn't hit me in the ass. Like I said, not too much to her here. Her attacks are super deadly. That beam is going to be your worst enemy. She does some pretty slow attacks. So you can dodge those. And these balls are so easy to dodge. You can keep out of those. And you might get caught off guard by throwing your salvation in the middle of that. But other than that, you shouldn't have no problem dodging those. You can literally just walk from that. Ain't much left to this fight. I never bothered using any shards on her. She's just not worth it, in my opinion. Constantly dodging those perfect dodges when she comes down the air at me. 
dodge those attacks when she does a charge attack. So watch out. If you don't perfect time that charge attack, she will come into a flurry with another attack there. So keep that in mind as well. I did use my stasis hollow ability, which gives you a little bit of damage resistance, a little bit of shield. So keep that in mind as well if you want to pop that up. That also is pretty useful for your extra damage reduction to you. Alright, we'll be moving on to Envy, fight number two, which is also a pretty easy boss fight. And as you probably guessed it, for the majority of the fight, I will be keeping my distance and, yes, throw my salvation at her and lure her to me, just like Avarice and any other boss that does the same patterns. When she does this charge attack, this lunge at me, I will dodge out the way and I get a couple hits and then I'll basically dash away. Now you can see it coming, as you can see her like basically pull the sword down and then that means she'll be charging at you. So be prepared to dodge out the way, get a couple hits on her, and retreat. And whenever you get the moment, just concentrate through your salvation. Like I said before, if you don't get those perfect dodges on those first attacks, you will be met with another flurry of attack too. So be prepared for that. And then she will also randomly be using the other Sin's abilities if you got your distance from her. The tentacle one is pretty random at most, like that, where I was like right close to her and she kind of had up and just spam with it. So be using the average, yeah, the fridge swing, so keep that in mind. It's not too bad if you're constantly keeping your distance from her or at medium range, throwing your salvation at her, dodging these Sin abilities is going to be a problem. You'll see her do some movement off in the distance, therefore you know she's ready for an attack. So keep that in mind, that way you get ready for the attack and just constantly be dodging. But if you're constantly using your salvation, throwing it at her, and constantly kind of dodging and alternating back and forth, you won't be even hit by any of these attacks period at all. So be prepared for her to mix up her moves here about halfway through her life, like most bosses do. She'll do some weird scythe combo swings with that twirling at you in the air, which is at medium range. If you do end up getting too close to her, she will do that weird spiked aura ability, which is pretty bad, so keep in mind for that. That's why I tend to get my distance from her at the most if I can. Now she also have the Wrath and Saw Slams. Now those are pretty bad. The Sloth one can be pretty bad if you don't pay attention to it. Make sure if you see it, just be dashing, dash, dash. I won't try to perfect dodge that. Now if you've gotten used to the Wrath Punch Slam aura, wave thing you should be used to the kind of timing for it once you see it just kind of wait a moment and then start jumping in the air but like I said as soon as you see sloth just just constant dash just get out the way as far as you can and I'm just gonna constantly sit here while I'm throwing my stuff at her I popped a frenzy shard just to make this a little bit easier to get some pretty good swings on her just kind of pay attention to what she's gonna be using for abilities off in the distance because she will be cycling through them pretty rapidly. She won't really attack you for the most part unless you get to that medium range like I said. That's when the only time I will get attacks on her is if she does that charge attack. I dodge that. I get a couple swings in at best. And then she'll kind of back away and I'll kind of run away myself as it is because she'll be prepared to do that. That's why I only want to get a couple swings and get out the way. If she will swing her sword around and stab into the ground. That's your cue to get out the way for that. So as long as you pay attention to what's popping up, you shouldn't have too big of a deal dodging your attacks. The tentacle one's probably the most random one. You won't really expect it too much as long as you see it. You're not really in mid-attack. You should be able to get out the way fast enough. Now that attack is very random, and I didn't see it very much, and it looks like it's pretty lethal. So once she does a scythe swing, I would just start dodging back as fast as you can because she's probably going to need to do that twirling one at your face or that circular one around your body and that was a bad moment for me to get caught by that so you can get caught pretty bad by her sword if you're behind her because she does some pretty wide swings so keep that in mind if you're behind her you can get hit by that as well so be prepared to get hit by accident if you're not prepared for that other than that that should do it guys thanks for watching stay tuned for more of my video guides coming up make sure you like and subscribe if you like this I hope this helped you guys out made these fights easier let me know and i'll catch you next time thanks for watching